Why do ghosts like elevators? Because they lift their spirits. Right, um, new section of course, 3.1.2.1. Uh, we'll start with the um, example of this. Um, I'll go and fill in some of the uh, the gaps during this video and, and future videos on uh, tropical rainforest. But the idea is what we need to have for your exam is an example of a small scale UK ecosystem to illustrate all of those concepts that we'll cover in this video. In this video we'll also cover the second bullet point here as well. Uh, we'll do this one uh, a completely separate one. Now when you guys covered this in year nine um, you might have done a, a series of different small scale ecosystems in the UK. I've seen Pond done in uh, some books and Hedgerows done in others. I'm going to advise you use this uh, local example because you do have to be able to name a specific example on uh, this element of the course. It, it can actually be a nine mark question. Um, because we're talking about ecosystems, we'll start with the um, best image for showing exactly what an ecosystem is, which is this uh, screenshot of the jungle book. This is the best image to show what an ecosystem is. Um, look what all the living things are doing with each other. You've got these two dancing. I don't know what Mowgli's doing. Um, they're all interacting with each other. You can see the ancillary monkey characters just looking at them dancing that counts as an interaction they're all interacting with each other but vitally and crucially what you guys need to know for an ecosystem is that it's not just the living or biotic factors interacting with each other just point out another one actually these uh, vines the monkeys swing on them obviously that wouldn't actually happen because the vines grow from the ground but they are interacting all the biotic factors are interacting with each other um However, it's also the living or biotic interacting with their non-living or abiotic environment. You've got this joker here hitting the log and this one sitting on the throne, I suppose that is. Um, whatever the bear's called has got a coconut on its face and grass in its hair. It's interacted with non-living environment to make itself clothes or something. And the living things are interacting with the other living things by dancing. This one's hitting a log to make noise. So it's interacting with the non-living environment by hitting this, but also arguably interacting with the living as well by making a sound. So for an ecosystem, if you ever get that term in an exam, I just want you to think jungle book for that. And from that point onwards, hopefully you can just remember this image and go, right, it's living, interacting with other living and also the non-living environment. Just remember this monkey's face. Right then, self-review. Um, I haven't done one of these on the videos before, but the idea is uh, you might want to pause this in a moment just to go through, read those terms through and go, right, how confident am I with these terms? Um, at the end of the video, it's well worth having a revise back over these and then clearing the video, trying to write them out yourselves, playing the video again and seeing how many of them you can match up. I mean, ecosystem we've already done. Producer, I know you've done in biology over and over and over again. So I'm sure you'll you'll be fine with that. I would like to see the word osmosis when you're talking about water here, because um, it's the osmosis of water through the roots that enables photosynthesis. But I'm pretty confident you'll you'll be aware of this one. Consumer, I will just quickly talk through. There are um, different types of consumers. You have primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary, quintenary. All these different types of consumers where they they build up from um, year bottom one, which is a primary consumer that only eats herbivores and plant matter where then you get secondary consumers that actually eat those herbivores and then you have tertiary consumers that will eat those secondary consumers i'll show you this as a little food web or food chain later decomposers uh, earthworm does count as a decomposer I've got asked this in class i've just checked it with the exam board uh, earthworms are decomposers in essence they break down the material into soluble nutrients which recycles their nutrients back into the environment as you can also see with this bottom term here nutrient cycling the idea that nutrients within the system is recycled back through the system um, on the basis that the decomposer can break the material down and then it can be uh, recycled by uh, the producers Food chain and food web, I know you've covered these since uh, primary school. Uh, the food chain is the more simple version, the food web more complex. The idea of energy transfer between um, different parts of the um, ecosystem. Um, 
one that isn't actually on here which i'll just link back to consumer is an apex or top predator i know again you've covered this in biology but just to make sure it's it's in this video that is a consumer that is not eaten by any other consumer it is the top or apex predator Right, our example, the one that I'd advise you to use is the Kingswood. Uh, hopefully some of you have been here before are aware of this area. 58 hectares of natural mixed woodland. Uh, a mixed woodland, uh, I think it's on the next slide, but just tell you now, it is a mixture of deciduous and coniferous trees. Deciduous trees will uh, lose their leaves. Coniferous trees generally um, are uh, conifer trees and actually generally don't even have leaves or uh, wouldn't lose them. Uh, pine trees would be an example of that. Uh, two miles south of St. Austell, the village of London Apprentice on the banks of the White River. I'm sure a lot of you have done what people are doing in this lovely image here of walking a dog through there or um, walking down to Pentuan. It is part of Pentuan Cycle Path. This is going to be your example named small ecosystem in the UK. Just a quick map showing the location of it. Obviously, this is actually Kingswood Bar and Restaurant, but you can see the 58 hectares, which is give or take around about uh, 58 football pitches size of um, woodland uh, just uh, next to that. It's um, It does count as a small scale ecosystem. Mixed woodland, I uh, mentioned already, coniferous and deciduous trees, variety of habitats for plant and animals, um, and the animals and plants have both adapted to these conditions. Just to show you quickly, I'm confident you will have done this uh, before if we were to start from um, March, April, May, you can actually work your way round to show the yearly cycle of adaptation of at the, actually this is just deciduous trees within uh, the Kingswood. Um, I won't talk those through. I think they're relatively common sense, obviously. Um, at October, November, you've got less sun, less hours of sunlight, I should say, at that time of the year. And as a result, that's why you see these different adaptations. Whereas June, July, August, um, that's when you've got longer sunlight hours. And as a result, that's why the adaptation you see is here. If you're not sure about any uh, of this uh, annual cycle, come and see us down at H7. I'll happily talk you through it. I, I hope it's, it's relatively common sense. Right then, um, your key terms, just to remind you on the left hand side there, um, ignore this, I don't know what's happening in the photocopying across, um, but the idea is those are your key terms you need to use. These are the animals we will now apply that to in the Kingswood. Uh, the most vital ones here, Sparrowhawk, it's going to come up a lot in a lot of different examples. Uh, wolf spider is another great one. The dormouse unfortunately isn't in this um, food web, although it could be. You could absolutely put the uh, the dormouse in there. It's essentially um, uh, a primary uh, consumer here, so you could absolutely throw that one in. Uh, thrush also very, very important. Just to identify, you've got three top predators in this example. Uh, your sparrowhawk is an apex predator, the fox is an apex predator, and the grass snake is uh, also an apex predator as well. Decomposers, uh, they they don't really count as an apex or top predator. They have their own category, although in essence, everything within this system will eventually be broken down by the decomposers. They don't count as a top predator. Just to point out here, the reason why I've um, swapped it from a pond that a lot of you did in year nine is um, these animals that you see here are your generic kind of almost seen everywhere across the UK example. The reason why we use these is if anything's ever being built in the UK, I don't know, a, a big reservoir in your pre-release, for example, or a um, a road or a high speed railway or a wind turbine. It doesn't matter what it is. These are the animals that are going to be impacted. So actually learning a handful of these animals, maybe one of the producers, a primary consumer, a secondary, a tertiary and a top predator. Actually, you're going to you're going to cover yourself in the exam because you'll be able to explain the impact on a, a, an ecosystem or a habitat of the building of anything on any greenfield site in the UK. Cause I mean, in, in all honesty, these animals don't have to live in a woodland. Um, anyone with a back garden seen, if not all of these, you may maybe not a fox as such, but you may well have seen all of these animals in your back garden. So they're your go to specifics. Please, in the exam, avoid animals without giving an example. It's just too vague. It will put you in the bottom level of a mark scheme. Put the specifics. Wolf's great one. Um, it's, it's, it sounds more specific than spider. And that's the reason why we, we picked that one. Sparrow, hawk, so much better than just bird. Try to use these specific examples. 
Right, here's your simplified food chain of Kingswood. The arrows show uh, energy transfer from grass to aphids that eat the grass, the wolf spider that eats the aphids, the thrush that will come down and eat uh, the wolf spider, it also eats slugs as well, and the sparrow hawk that will um, eat voles, which aren't on this simple food chain, but the thrushes as well. Just something to identify at this point that all of these animals will actually end up with a decompose in the end, they'll all be broken down by the decomposers, and then your future grass that grows will then uh, utilize this soluble nutrients, which it will osmosize and used to photosynthesize it will then provide more uh, food for aphids which will then provide the prey for wolf spiders etc just to identify there's your producer which is grass your primary consumer is your aphids secondary consumer is your wolf spider tertiary consumer is the thrush and the top predator uh, the boss of this uh, little food chain is the sparrow hawk which will eat the thrush one thing just another little exam question i'm sure you've covered this in biology but actually not all the energy of let's take the wolf spider will actually reach the thrush because the thrush will um have to respirate it the wolf spider when it eats the aphids will move itself and as a result the thrush doesn't get all the energy that the grass would have got energy is lost as you go up the um food chain so the sparrowhawk doesn't all the energy of the grass all the aphids all the wolf spider all the thrush even the sparrowhawk has to chase the thrush to get that energy and likewise the thrush had to chase the wolf spider to respirate to burn that energy off so energy is lost as you go up through um, a food chain and the same with the food web as you're about to see right here's your food web uh hopefully you can identify it's a little bit more complicated we've got um numerous different arrows um with some animals crossing what would be this is a trophic level is actually crossing a level to to reach the fox there so your fox is a lovely example it actually finds itself level in the food chain or food web i should say with the thrush however the fox is a top predator and nothing eats the fox whereas the thrush isn't because the sparrow hawk eats the thrush but obviously the sparrow hawk would not eat the fox your decomposers wait in the bottom right hand corner remember everything will actually end up with the decomposers and that broken down soluble material will be recycled by the dandelion and the grass now then standard standard exam question is going to be what happens if we take x out of the food web and with this the key piece of exam advice i will have given you in class is up down left and right whatever animal you are talking about or whichever producer you're talking about i want you to try to expand on the explanation of what the impact will be so we'll take um, an example here we will say uh, in this example that i don't know 90 percent of the rabbits have been wiped out by disease like mystomasiasis or something like that which essentially means you've got a decrease in the number of rabbits what you then have to do is look at your food web and it's almost certainly going to be a four mark question and go right what would the impact be on the rest of the food web and i want you to go up down left and right and make sure we're talking about all different elements of the food web not just the the obvious ones that are linked so for example we'll take the easy one if there are 90 percent less rabbits one mark is going to be identified that foxes have less prey uh, to eat and therefore the number of foxes is likely to decline because they have less rabbits to eat a bit more complicated than that after you've gone to the fox go right what else is going to be impacted by the fox having to change its eating habits it's unfortunately going to be the, in the hedgehog's case is unfortunate for the hedgehog because the reality is the fox will now have to eat more hedgehogs Okay, so we've got, probably got two marks at this point saying, well, the foxes have got less prey, their numbers may decline. However, the fox may actually end up eating more hedgehogs to sustain its population. If the number of hedgehogs goes down, which is almost certainly going to do, hopefully we can see here that the number of slugs may actually increase because they've got less predators in terms of hedgehogs. However, now look at what we've done. We've gone right, we've gone down, we've gone left. We can now go all the way up here as well. Look at this. Uh, if there's an increase in the number of slugs, I'll tell you what, the thrush is going to be very, very keen on this. The thrush will have more prey, it will be able to reproduce more, because uh, they'll be a healthier animal, and as a result, the number of thrushes may increase. Another animal that might be delighted that the number of slugs has increased is the wolf spider. Uh, the wolf spider is likely to be eaten less if there are more slugs available for the thrushes to eat, so the wolf spider number may actually temporarily increase, which could have a, ne a negative impact on the aphid number that might also uh, decrease if this number were to increase. Coming all the way back to the start, remember we've got less rabbits, it probably will equal more grass and more dandelions as less of it is being consumed by that primary consumer, 
potentially and arguably good news for the aphids and the slugs, which the numbers may well then increase because they have more food, there's less competition for um, grass and dandelions in this example. We can almost end up considering that every single animal would be impacted by a reduction in rabbits, and it's absolutely true, they would be. And the key term to end this is that the ecosystem becomes unbalanced unbalanced so we'll have an, a rapid increase in certain numbers and then it might therefore lead to a rapid decrease in other numbers um so just take a, a, an example there um i don't know if the number of thrushes rapidly increases as a result of there being uh was it more how do we end up with more slugs again Let's just talk that back through myself foxes have to eat more hedgehogs with the rabbits dead as a result you'll have more slugs would be less hedgehogs. Yeah, there you go. So you'll have more slugs as a result, which could therefore equal more thrushes, which could therefore equal... Well, actually, some arrowhawks could survive better then. And you start getting this negative impact throughout uh, all different stages of the food web with increasing and decreasing numbers. Eventually, the ecosystem will naturally stabilise itself again. But very, very important, it has that impact of changing or altering the, the food web. So if you get that up, down, left, right question, as lo sorry, if you get a food web question, remember up, down, left and right, can you go round this food web and identify how different animals will be affected and make sure you actually identify all the time what animal would have been eaten or is eating other animals. A um, bit of a, a rant there at the end regarding that food web, but hopefully that all makes sense to you. It, it should be an easier case study example than the pond would have been. Come see us down H7 if you're not sure about any of it.